First Samuel 22. First Samuel chapter 22. And uh, let me say, I hope you've had a good day today. Uh, I'll tell you, we, uh, I left this prayer request out. First uh, Samuel 21. I'm, so I don't know why. I've got, I'm going to be in chapter 22, but tonight we'll start in chapter 21. But I do have another prayer request. I'm asking God to give us an early fall. <laughs> I, I've had all the heat I want, amen. <laughs> and, and it won't be long. I'll be in here and I'll probably be saying, I'm asking God for an early summer. <laughs> we'll be freezing to death. We just never content sometimes, are we? But uh, I hope you've had a wonderful day. First Samuel chapter 21. And uh, let's just uh, we'll go ahead and... I tell you what, for time's sake, let's just read verse 7. Uh, I'll bring you up to speed, and then we'll start in verse 7. If you recall, David has come to Ahimelech, the priest. And he's come there, and he's asked for bread and weapons. Do you remember these thoughts we've been, we've been sharing with you? And Ahimelech does uh, give him the bread and the sword of Goliath. But in detail, while he's there, God highlights a man by the name of Doag. The Edomite. And I want to start there tonight in verse 7. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, watch this, detained before the Lord. And his name was Doag the, an Edomite, the chiefest of the herdmen uh, that belonged to Saul. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you so much for your goodness. I pray now as we look into the Word of God, Lord, you'd help us to uh, glean some things from the Bible. Thank you for the day that we've had. Thank you, Lord, for those that were here this morning. And as already been prayed, we're asking you to do much in our church as far as growth and spiritual growth. Thank you, Lord, for these tonight that in obedience to the Word of God, to the Bible, to the Lord Jesus are here. And Lord, I, I'm looking for, I know you're going to shed your favor on them and bless them, Lord, for their obedience. I pray you'd start with that tonight by helping us as we preach. And uh, Lord, you'd uh, highlight some things that uh, would help us to grow in the Word of God and grow in our Christian walk. I do again pray for the Petal family, Lord, we ask that where the death angels passed, uh, there's an emptiness, uh, there's a void. And I pray, God, that you would uh, touch uh, Brother Burl and his family at this time. We'll love you for it. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to look first of all at the duty of Doag. Notice with me in verse 7, Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord. His name was Doag, an Edomite. The chiefest of the herdmen. Uh, jo, uh, this was not a lowly position, by the way, the herdsman. He was not just a herdsman, friend. He was the chiefest of the herdsmen. And that had to do with the finances of Saul, friend. Uh, taking care of the cattle. Taking care of uh, the uh, exchange of cattle. So financially, uh, Doag was one that was way up on the list. And because of his position, this high position, he was in the inner circle of Saul. And being in the inner circle of Saul, he was accepted by Saul. Now, he was not only the chief herdsman, but you're going to find out that he's going to be promoted here in just a little while. And the reason he's going to be promoted is because uh, he comes out and he spills the beans, if you will, on Ahimelech and David, and he stands up for Saul. Let's just look at that real quick. Uh, look over in a second. That's what was on my heart. 1 Samuel 22, look there. We'll get there here in just a little bit. But 1 Samuel 22, notice verse 6. And uh, you're going to find out that here, in the midst of this conversation with Saul, Doag and the other servants, Doag is going to be promoted because of what he tells Saul. And uh, by being promoted uh, and having the chiefest position as the herdsman and being in the inner circle, 
when he comes to this passage that I'm reading you now, uh, Doag's testimony is going to carry a lot of weight because of who he is. And uh, have you ever noticed how the devil will use people who have a lot of weight in society and in the government? And so here's a man who's uh, of the chiefest of the herdsmen. He's a money man. He's on the inner circle of Saul. And he sees an opportunity to be promoted. Watch your Bible, verse 6 of chapter 22. When Saul heard that David was discovered... And the men that were with him, now Saul abode in Gibeah under the tree of Ramah, having his spear in his hand, and all his servants were standing about him. Then Saul said unto the servants that stood about him, Hear now, ye Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards and make you all captains of thousands and captains of hundreds? Uh, that all of you have conspired against me. He said, all of y'all betrayed me. Watch it. All of you have conspired against me. And there is none that showeth me that my son hath made league with the son of Jesse. And there is none of you uh, that is sorry for me. Boy, he's got his thumb in his mouth, don't he? Watch this. None of you is sorry for me. Uh, or showeth unto me that my son hath stirred up my servant against me. Now, oh, that's a total bunch of lies. He didn't stir up, uh, they, they didn't stir David up against him. He got jealous over David's courageous attitude and, 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 and high uh, character and Christian uh, character. Amen. Uh, but uh, serve my servant against me to lie in and wait as in the day, as in this day. Then answered Doag the Edomite. Old loudmouth speaks up here. Then answered Doag the Edomite, which is which is set over. That's what I'm looking for. Set over the uh, servants of Saul and said, "I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob, uh, to Ahimelech, uh, the son of Hatub." And he inquired of the Lord for him and gave him victuals and gave him the sword of the Goliath, the Philistine. Then the king sent to call him elect the priest, the son of Ahitab, and all his father's house, the priests that were in Nob. And they came uh, of them to the king. And Saul said, Here now, thou son of Ahitab. And he answered, Here am I. And Saul said unto him, Why have ye conspired against me? Thou and the son of Jesse, in that thou hast given uh, him bread and sword, and hast inquired of God for him, and that he should rise against me to lie in wait today. And Ahimelech answered the king and said, And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thine house? Uh, did I then begin to inquire the Lord for him? Be it far from me. Let not the king impute anything unto this servant, nor to all of the house of my father, for thy servant knew nothing of all this, lest more. And the king said, Thou shalt surely die, Ahimelech. Now, what are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to tell you, friend, Doag, God points something out here. That Doag had, was in the inner circle from finances. And by having this high position and being promoted, when it come to speaking against God's man, Ahimelech, the devil used someone with authority on the inside. And when he did this, I want you to know, friends, some things begin to unwind and God begin to allow some things to take place. Doag, friend, his duty, he was the chiefest of Saul's herdsmen. I want to look at you and look at also what we want to call the descent of, uh, the, descent of, the, of, of Doag. His descent, he was an Edomite. Now, uh, I've got these verses for you, but I'll just give them off for time's sake. I, I owe y'all probably 10 minutes. Did y'all notice I preached a little long this morning? Uh, but that's all right, Brother Mark. Brother Mark, you wasn't watching the clock, was you? Oh, man, you ought to have been up here with me. Some of them's glory. Glory to God, when's he going to finish? But no, 
uh, he's an Edomite. And the Edomites, or the, the descendant of Esau, and these people, uh, they were not too friendly and not too loving toward God's people or God's anointed. Matter of fact, they were a thorn in the flesh, if you will. They were a, a heartache. So this man was a descendant of Esau. And uh, you can find that in Genesis chapter 36, verse 1. And uh, his race, if you will, God points out his race. His race, John Butler said, cast a shadow about his character. Here is one who is in total defiant to God, alienated from God and from God's anointed. You'll find that out. And Saul is running with him. You see that? Saul here has run David off and uh, he has been, he has annihilated himself from God. Now you remember what God told him? He said, look, if you'd just done my will, he said, everything would have been all right, but it's, it's better to obey than to sacrifice. Saul got to feeling sorry uh, for what he had done and Samuel come along there to the priest. God sent his man down there and said, hey, look, uh, why have ye not obeyed the Lord? He said, oh, I've obeyed. He said, what meaneth the bleeding of the sheep? Why you still got them sheep out there? You're supposed to took out uh, Amalek and all the Amalekites and you've disobeyed God. You've dishonored God. You don't know how to obey. And it's better to obey than to sacrifice. And by the way, while I'm on the subject, it's cost you the kingdom. Saul's been separated from God. And by being separated and alienated from God, friend, he runs David off. Now Saul running David off is one thing, but rather than siding with David, God's anointed, Saul comes along and he befriends and promotes Doag, the Edomite. The descendant. Now I want to look at one more thought. I'm not going to keep you long, maybe. Maybe I won't. I said maybe. Uh, but I want us to look that um, Doag here uh, comes out, and, and I, I, I wrote this down. I'm trying to find it here. Okay. I got to look at this, and if you're not careful, don't, if you're ever reading in the Bible and you come up on a word that you really don't understand why it's there or what it means, don't do yourself an injustice and just pass over it. Get you a, two, let me tell you what you need to study the Bible. Get you a Strong's Concordance and get you a Webster's Dictionary and that's all you need and the Word of God. Uh, but when you come across a word, uh, it's there for a reason. The Holy Spirit of God is unlike you and I. He doesn't waste words. When he says some of us will just go on and on and on, we can do it sometime and just, just talk. And, but he doesn't waste words. When he speaks every, every word, every jot, every tittle. Amen. Well, here I want you to notice something. Uh, in verse 7 of chapter 21, Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day detained before the Lord. Why was he detained? Well, there's a couple of thoughts that I'll give you. Uh, I'm personally going to lean to the last one that I'll share with you. And I did. I got it from Brother Butler, and I believe he's right. I believe he's dead on the money. Uh, but some say, well, he may have been detained for religious purposes. He was there, and God had had him held back for religious reasons. Other man come out and said that it was possible he had a case of leprosy. I believe the Lord would have pointed that out, but uh, that's a possibility. Uh, that he had leprosy, and so he was detained there and couldn't leave. Uh, but the reason here is this. He's detained because of divine appointment. Now, what I mean by that is this. God, God through his providence, is going to bring some things to pass here. Now, if you have your Bible, look with me in Second Sam, uh, 1 Samuel 2. There's some things that took place in the priesthood in 1 Samuel 2 that I'm going to highlight. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Uh, how many of you remember Hophni and Phinehas? Well, if you remember them, you'll, you'll recall. I'm looking for the right verse here. You'll recall that in verse 34, verse 2, 
And this shall be a sign unto thee that uh, shall come upon thy two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. In one day they shall die, both of them. Now, the reason they're going to die is, I think I've got it marked here real quickly. Um, if you'll turn back to chapter 2, I was in... I was in the latter part of verse 31, but if you'll turn back to, uh, turn in back to chap, uh, verse 17 of chapter 2, uh, wherefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. Uh, friend, they had done something with the offering, some things that God was, dis, that God was displeased with. And God said, I'll tell you what, it's going to cost the priesthood. I'm going to take the priesthood out. And, and there's some of you going to die. So look here. Here's what happens. When Doag is detained, uh, whether you want to admit it, whether you want to agree with it or not, here's the hand of God through providence. He's got Doag in the uh, priest, uh, the, high, the, the tabernacle with Ahimelech, the high priest. And he's got him there because God said he was going to take out the priest, friend. God promised it was a... It was a judgment that God was going to bring to pass on these priests. Well, while Doag is there, friend, God is going to use Doag to bring his judgment to pass. Now watch this. I wrote this down. Psalm 76, verse 10. You can write that down or look at it later. It's often God will use the wrath of man to bring his will to pass. Let's just look at that real quick. Look over in Psalm. Psalm chapter 76 and verse 10. Uh, you there yet? If you're not, come on to Sunday school. Amen. Brother Greg, help you find the pages. Psalm 76 verse 10. Notice what it says. He says, Surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. In other words, when man gets mad, God will use his wrath to praise the Lord for prophecies. And in this case, what you're seeing is this. Here is Doeg the Edomite, the one who is a heartache to the Israelites. And King Saul, who is, an, who is a, the king of the Israelites, friend, has run away from David, run David off, and come into cohorts with Doeg the Edomite, and through the midst of this, everybody don't really know what's going on, but Providence has Doeg there because Saul's wrath and his anger is going to come out, and Doeg is going to slay the priest. You ever see that? Let me tell you something, friend. I can promise you one thing. When God says he's going to judge someone, he is going to do it. Now, in, to keep this thing in its context, I've got another verse I'll show you here uh, that I want to share with you. Look over. We went to, did we go to second, uh, 1 Samuel 22? We went there, didn't we? All right. Uh, First Samuel, I'm trying to look over there where Saul slew the priest. I, I want to say it was in Second Samuel, uh, First Samuel 22. Let's turn there. First Samuel 22. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, here we go. All right. Uh, well, let's look in verse 9 here. Then answered, you got this? First Samuel 22, verse 9. Then answered Doag the Edomite, which is set over the servants of Saul, and said, I saw the son of Jesse come to Nob, to Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, and he inquired of the Lord. You know what they're saying? They're, they're saying the priest uh, went to God for day, on David's behalf, and, and because the priest prayed for David, God's anointed, he deserves to die, is what's being said here inquired of the Lord for him, and gave him victuals, and gave him the sword of Goliath the Philistine. Then the king sent to call Ahimelech the priest, here it is, the son of the high tub, and all his father's house. He's not only calling Ahimelech, buddy, uh, Saul is so angry, the wrath of man shall praise the Lord. He's not only so angry at Saul, he is going to bring vengeance on Ahimelech, 
and his entire house, all these priests. Watch your Bible. Uh, and uh, Verse 12, And Saul said, Hear, hear now, thou son of Ahimelech, thou son of Ahitub. And he answered him, Here am I, my Lord. And Saul said unto him, Why have ye conspired against me, uh, thou and the son of Jesse, that, they, uh, that he hast given bread and the sword of, uh, and hast inquired of God for him, uh, that he should rise against me, to lie in and wait. Then Ahimelech answered, we read this a minute ago, let's move down swiftly, uh, I want to say to verse 20. And one of the sons of Ahimelech, well hold on, here it was, verse, uh, verse 16, thank you my brother, may all your traffic lights be green. Verse 16, and the king said, thou shalt surely die Ahimelech, thou in all thy father's house. And the king said unto the footman, that footman had more sense than all of them. Watch this. And the king said unto the footman that stood about him, Turn and uh, slay the priest of the Lord, because uh, their hand, uh, <clears throat> and slay the priest of the Lord, because their hand also is with David. In other words, uh, they've left the king, and the king has given the, uh, the go ahead to kill all the priests. And because they, uh, with the hand of the Lord, and because they knew when he fled, and did not show it to me. But the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priest of the Lord. And the king said to Doag, Turn thou and fall upon the priest. And Doag the Edomite turned and fell upon the priest and slew on that day fourscore and five persons that wear the linen ephod. And Nob, the city of the priests, he smote the edge of the sword. Watch this, both men and women. He didn't only kill men and women. He killed men and women. Watch this. Children and suckling and oxen, asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. And one of the sons of Ahimelech, Ahitub, hey, mark this guy. We're going to talk about him here in a few days. Named Abiathar escaped and fled for David. And Abiathar showed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priest. Here's what I want to show you. Friend, when God tells you he's going to judge you, or he's going to judge a situation, he's going to do it. And this looks like a horrible, bad situation, and it is bad. All these priests had to die. But keep in mind, friend, Hophni and Phinehas were allowed to just belittle the things of God, and it angered God. Now look. We ought to take God's business more serious than any business. We ought to take God's house more serious. We ought to take the preaching, the singing, the Sunday school hour. It's serious business. Amen. Amen. <coughs> this is the house of the Lord. That's why uh, we're, not, we're not putting on a show or we're not making a belittling of the things of God. Hey, God took out the priest, friend, for allowing this thing to happen. They abhorred the offering of the Lord, the Bible said, chapter 22. And uh, God judged them for it. Now, that may help you understand why I'm serious about an order of a service. I've been in some churches, and they just do anything. It's no big deal. It's almost like a cinema the uh, a cinema or a movie show atmosphere. Bring the popcorn, get up and go to the water fountain, go to the bathroom seven times. Hey, if you need to use the bathroom, go. Okay, <laughs> let me make that clear. We don't want you staying the seats, okay? But what I'm getting at is this. That mentality of, of just not having respect for the house of God is, is not of the Lord. Now, I think you can go too far if you're not careful. You can be... You know, you can maybe be too uh, far to the right or whatever however you want to call it. But what I'm getting at is this. There ought to be respect. We ought not belittle the things of God. We ought to not desecrate the house of God. Somebody, I remember I, pra I, I actually pastored this church. I almost turned this church down because of what transpired. Uh, but if I recall right now, uh, it was, uh, it, I had either taken it or was going to take it. But my wife and I said, we preached a homecoming. And uh, they took a worldly song, House of the Rising Sun, and played some, I mean, desecrated the house of God. I'll tell you, brethren, 
I did not want to preach. I wanted to get out of there. They took a wicked crowd that wrote a bunch of stuff and mixed it with Christian words and ripped a, a, a one of the greatest songs that has ever been penned for Christianity and for faith and slew it back and forth. And I'll tell you, it angered me. It bothered me. And I said, boy, I got to deal with this. And it wasn't long. I was a pastor there about two weeks. And the deacon come up to me and he mentioned them. I said, well, I can tell you one thing. He said, what's that? I said, they'll never sing here again. He said, well, they're so-and-so's family. I said, I'm a very wealthy man. I said, sir, I understand that. I said, maybe you didn't hear me. They'll never sing here again. Amen. He said, preacher, why is that? I said, do I need to explain? And I explained. He said, you know what? He said, you're right. He said, you are right. He said, I'm sorry we had to experience that. He handled it the right way. But there are certain things, there are do's and don'ts in the house of God and leadership. It's not that we just come up here and want to just set this thing up and do it any way we want to. No, no, no. Even for myself, I want to be careful of what I do and say and how we run the house of God. Amen. There should be respect about the things of the Lord. Amen. There ought not be a bunch of loose, looseness about the house of God. But in closing, I want to remind you, when God says he'll judge something, you don't have to think that he's not going to do it. He's going to do it. No one would have ever, and let me tell you something, let me point this out. You don't always know when it's going to happen. Amen. Because just like the Lord said he's coming, the rapture of the church, he's coming like a thief in the night. Yes, a thief doesn't announce his, his prayer. Oh, hey, I'm in here. Uh, I don't, don't get your 40 caliber or your 9 millimeter. I'm robbing you blind. I'm here. No, he comes and you don't even know he's there until it's too late. Well, what took place here was this. They didn't have a clue what was going on. And God had previously, through providence, had detained, the Lord detained Doag the Edomite. He had him there to see what was going on because he knew, listen, Doag was a loudmouth gossip. He was, a, he was a fellow that, that was totally against the things of God. And by Saul, look here, let me give you this. By Saul running with him and not running with David, birds of a feather flocked together. Saul had been alienated from God. Saul had been uh, purposely, willfully separated from God and God's will. And he, and he made friendship with Doag. He not only made him the chiefest of his herdsmen, but he promoted him over all the servants. And let me tell you something. It matters who your friends are. Your friends speak volumes about our character and how much we love the Lord. Don't run it by me. No, sir. Here, he's, here he is running with an Edomite friend. Are you kidding me? And he's the king of Israel. And God said, oh, well, he didn't even realize what the Lord was doing. The Lord had old Doag there. And Doag said, I saw the son of Jesse. And Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, I saw him give him bread and victuals. And he gave him the sword of Goliath. And you talk about furiating Saul. You talk about his wrath. He was so mad. He slew the Lord's priests, knowing the, the, the judgment that was in the word of God over touching God's men. He slew them. He's a coward, though. He didn't pick a sword up himself. He tried to get a man of a man that was probably of good character as foot, and he said, no, I'm not doing that. But he found one over here that was an Edomite, and God had him ready. He didn't even realize that it. it was all because of the judgment. God rewilded and come back here to Hophni and Phinehas. 
Life had passed by. Eli thought it was over with. There'd be no judgment. And listen, down the road in future lineages, in future descendants were affected by Hophni and Phineas' sin. It matters how we live right now. Amen. It matters what we do. You can be sure of one thing, friend. This book will never change. It is the final authority given to man. This is the word of Almighty God. And I'll promise you when he says something, he means it. God doesn't speak in, in order, in, in, with inordinate affection. God doesn't look at you and I and tell us one thing and then change his mind and not do it. You're telling me the generations has passed down and all of a sudden God's let it pass for a reason. Why? Because of the impact of the sin that was committed by Hophni and Phineas. Years later, and you tell, I'm telling you the, 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 the impact of the pain went from Ahimelech all the way back, brother. It matters what we do for the Lord. And we want the favor of God, not the judgment of God. It's been so good to be in God's house. Stand with me if you would, please. Let me say to all of our uh, social media, uh, we appreciate you tuning in. Those that are commenting on the messages and listening to the messages. We trust the Lord will help us uh, build this ministry. It's been good to be here. Don't forget Wednesday night. We'll be here, be in the life of Peter. Looking forward to God doing some things there. Please pray. There'll be a private, uh, a private graveside tomorrow. And uh, we'll be there and uh, ministering to the family. So you pray for us. Brother Mark, sir, if you would, would you dismiss us? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be in the house tonight. And Lord, we hear from you in your word. Uh, we uh, ask you just to help us to take the word, the lesson you learned tonight, and Lord, just carry it for our lives. Help us out. Lord, we thank you for each and every one that's here tonight. And Lord, just bless them and give them sleep. We ask for a special blessing. Thank you.